Hi, in this tutorial we're going to look at how to animate a series of images. And this is an example of what our final app is going to do. We're going to have a graphic and we're also going to have a switch. It's going to start without any animation and when we toggle the switch it will start the animation. And so we'll keep going until we turn it off again. So we'll look at how to implement a toggle switch as well as doing a frame by frame animation. So to get started, I'm going to go into Xcode and I'm going to create a single view application. And I'm going to click next. I'm going to give it a name. And I'm just going to call it animate series. I'm just going to make sure automatic reference counting is checked and click next and save my file. Now since I only want my animation to be supported in landscape left or landscape right, I'm going to remove the portrait option from the supported device orientations. And then I'm going to go into the view controller implementation file and I'm in the should auto rotate to interface orientation. I'm going to change this so that it will only be for the portrait orientation landscape left or landscape right. Okay, so now when my application starts, it will only be supported in either one of those two orientations. Next, I'm going to go into my interface builder and set up my user interface. And even though we have the orientation set for landscape, interface builder doesn't recognize that. So I'm going to select, make sure my view is selected and change the orientation to landscape. And then I'm going to add an image view that's going to contain my animation. So I'm just going to drag an image view onto the screen. I'm going to cover up the whole screen with it. And then I'm also going to find a switch and drag that onto the screen. Now I want my animation to start off, so I'm going to have this to display off in its initial state instead of on. So with the switch selected over in the attributes panel, I'm going to change the state to off. And that's how I want it to display initially. Right now, this doesn't, just by dragging this onto the screen, into our interface, this isn't connected to anything yet that would start or stop the animation. So we have to wire that into our code. So I have an image view, and what I need now is some images. Now I have, when you're going to animate a series of images, you need to have the images already created for the animation. So as I said, I have a series of images that are for loops, where she's doing her skating loop. You can see here, you know, there's a series. They look like they're the same, and a lot of the beginning ones are until she starts to go up and actually do her loop. So we have a series of 24 frames where she executes the full loop. So I'm going to drag this folder into my supporting files folder. And I'm going to say to copy them in there so that we'll have a copy of the files in here that we'll be able to use. Okay, so now I have my images in here and my interface is set up. So I'm going to next set up the header file so that we can control the switch and we can control the animation that's going to take place in our image view. So I'm going to close out of the utility panel and go into the assistant editor. And this brings up my view controller H file and if it doesn't bring up your view controller H file, you want to make sure you change it to that. And now I want to set up my properties for my switch and also my image view. So I'll start with the switch. I'm going to make sure that it's selected and I want this to cause an action because when I tap it, I want it to start the animation and when I tap it again to stop the animation. So I'm going to connect this to an IV action, right? So instead of an outlet, we want it to do something. So we'll 
set that up as an action, and I'm going to call this toggle animation. And I'll click connect. And also now I'm going to select the image view and right click and drag from it. Now that is an outlet. That's going to be the target of an action or some coding. So I'm going to call this animation view. And that is going to be where our animation will take place. So now that I have these connected, we can exit out of the assistant editor and move into the view controller implementation file where we can code our animation. Now you can see here that it synthesized the animation view and it also created the IV action. And again, I'm going to move this up to the top just because it'll be easier to see in our video. Now, one of the things that we want to have happen is when our view loads, we want it to load in an array of images in order to use for our animation. And I'm going to show you two different techniques for doing that. And uh, it's a little bit of typing, so I'm going to copy and paste some in here and then we'll explain the code. Okay, so this is an array of images and so we create that array by saying NS array and we can add objects to it so we'll have array with objects and for each image we can say it's a UI image and it's an image named and then we have the name of the image. So this goes along with all of our images that we have in here for our animation. So what I would have to do would be to come in here and copy this and paste it in for each of the 24 frames that we have for the animation. Right? So we have to change each one of these to the next number in the series. And that's kind of long and convoluted, but it'll work. Another alternative is we can create an array by looping through and telling it how many images or uh, how many times we want it to loop through. And as it loops through to create this array. So we can do that dynamically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment this one out. And to begin with, I'm going to create a constant. So up here after my import statement, this is generally where you define your constants. I'm going to put in define, and this is how we create a constant. And generally, you use all uppercase letters when you're going to do a constant. And that's typical of a lot of different programming languages, because then you can immediately identify that it's a constant. And I'm going to say my image count is 24. Now don't put a semicolon after this. You might be used to putting it in other places and that'll cause you an error. So we're just saying that we're defining image count as 24. And if I had an animation that was 15, then all I'd have to do is come in here and change this to 15. And then the code that we write for creating our array will work. So now that we have that image count, I'm going to create another array but this time it's an NS mutable array. And a mutable array is one that's changeable. So since we're dynamically looping through this to create it, it needs to be mutable. So NS mutable array, and I'm going to use images. And to create this array, we're going to say NS mutable array. We have to allocate it and initialize it, but we're going to initialize it with capacity. And we're going to say, OK, the capacity of this array is going to be image count. So again, this is picking up from our constant up here. So if we had a longer or shorter animation, we change this, and this automatically updates. Now we need to create a looping structure. So I'm going to initialize a value for i. And then we're going to do a for loop. We're going to initialize it with i equal to 1. And as long as i is less than image count, we want it to increment i. So while it's going through that loop, what do we want it to do? It's going to actually generate a similar type of statement that we have here. So we're going to say in our images array, add object. And our object is going to be a UI image view, or a UI image, sorry, a UI image. And it's image named. 
Now to get this part of this structure, we're going to create a string and it's a string with format and the format is going to be a text string so it's an at sign symbol double quote now our file name it all starts with loop so we'll say loop and then instead of putting in a specific number we want to replace that number with the value of i but we need to put a placeholder in here so we're going to say percent d which represents a digit dot png and that percent sign d gets replaced with our value of i. So as it loops through, the first time this i is 1, so we have loop 1.png, it increases the value to 2. When it does this add object, then this becomes loop 2.png, and so forth, until this becomes false and uh, we have 24 images in our array. So this is a much more efficient way of creating our images array rather than copying and pasting and changing the value. So this kind of a structure will work for any type of an array, especially when we're initializing a series that are pretty much all the same with some one thing that's different. Okay, now that we have our array of images, we want to put those images into our animation view. So we'll say animation view and animation images, right? This is something that is given to us as a part of Xcode. Let me finish putting the rest of this in. Animation images is equal to, and we're going to create another array, and this is going to be an array with array, and the array that we're going to be using is our images array that we created. So I'm going to bring up the utility panel here and when I click on animation images right, we can see it's part of the UI image object and so this is where we list the array of images that should be used for animation. Now that we have that defined we can specify the duration so we say animation view animation duration and that equals let's just say one we can see what that looks like. So again, animation duration, the amount of time it takes to go through one cycle of the images. So this is in seconds. So this is in one second, it's going to run all of the images in the animation. And now we can just start the animation, even though we're going to use our toggle button, let's just see if we can see the animation and then we will turn that off in order to have the toggle button control it. So let's say animation view, start animating. So let's run and test this in the simulator. Okay, so you can see it automatically starts playing and our toggle button doesn't have any control over this yet. And you can see that she's uh, doing her loops pretty fast. So we can slow down that animation or speed it up by going back in here and changing this value. So if I say, Okay, this is how many seconds it takes to do one loop of all of our 24 images. So let's say if I change that to three and then try running it again. Okay, a slower animation. Okay, now let's see how we can set up this button to toggle this to start and stop. So I'm going to comment out this line and we have our button set up so that our toggle button to do the toggle animation method. So this is where we're going to have to put in the code in order for it to control starting and stopping the animation. And so what we want to do is a simple if check to see if the sender, which is our toggle button, is on. And that's a boolean, it's either on or it's off. And if it's on, we want to do the start animating. So I can just copy this and put it up here. And then we can say else. And to stop an animation, we do animation view stop animating. And I have an error. I forgot to put my closing square bracket here. OK, so I think that should work now. So I'm going to rerun it in the simulator. Now when this starts, we don't have an image in here, so we might want to go back and fix that as well. 
but let's just see if our toggle button works. So if I go on, okay, then she starts to animate. And if I do off, then it stops and she disappears. So an easy fix to get the picture or her graphic to show up at the beginning, I'm just gonna go back to the interface builder and I'm gonna select the UI image view. And then in the attributes panel, I'm going to select the first image that's in the animation. I think I'm also going to put on a black background, so instead of the gray, while I'm here, I'm just going to change this to black. Now it'll look more like the example I showed at the beginning. And so let's run this. All right, our image starts here, not animating. When we tap it, starts the animation, and when we stop it, it stops the animation and puts it back in the first position. So that's the basics of creating an animation using a series of images. Now again, the images that I used were already pre-created and actually I used Flash and there's a separate video if you know Flash on how to export a series of PNG images. And then I was just able to import them into Xcode.